Hello everyone, it's me Aurora and today I'm going to be doing a little book review on the book called The Icy Pirates. This book was a really good book and just by looking at it, it looks really pretty and it is a wonderful story. So this book is, I'm going to straight jump into it, so <laughs> this book is about three, three people, Siri, Mickey and their dad. But they have no idea how much excitement they're going to get themselves into. So I'm going to read the blurb. Um, if you don't know what a blurb is, I've got an explanation in one of my past videos. Well, maybe not one of them. I have lots of explanations about blurbs, so you want to go check them out. Alright, I'm just going to go into it and read the blurb. Ice, wolves, mermaids. Nothing will stop Siri setting out to rescue her sister from the fearsome icy pirates. Whoa, just by reading that, you feel the excitement rushing into you. Well, maybe not for you, but for me. <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to explain what the first bit is about. So, as I told you, three people, Siri, Mickey and their dad, really happily living together as a nice small family. So, there's nothing that could really go wrong until today. Siri and Mickey go off, you know, picking snowberries. It's a really good berry they like to eat. So they go off picking snowberries. They're chatting nicely. Sorry, but one day, well, not one day, pardon me, <laughs> Well, the time they go and picking snowberries is Siri and Mickey talking. But then Siri says, Mickey, you want to go and, you know, pick berries somewhere else? I'm just going to think about something. So Mickey goes off and Siri thinks about what she has to do, gradually filling her basket. Until Siri hears a scream. And this scream is Mickey's scream. Siri knows it. But the thing she notices Mickey's scream is quite girlish and on and last actually for two minutes. But this scream had a slight panic to it. It just sounded like she would, Mickey was frightened and it lasted for 30 seconds. Siri wasn't really bothered about this. But then when she didn't, when Mickey didn't start coming back, she ran off to find her. So, Siri finds Mickey, but two other men. Oh my. Dun, dun, dun. So I'm going to leave it right there. And if you want to know what happens after that, I'm sorry, there are consequences, you have to read the book. So... In the meantime, I'm going to read the first chapter of this book so you get the idea and the style, the writing style of the, um, of the writer's, writer's book. So when you first open the book, it got a nice map and it's really beautifully illustrated and it tells you everything you need to know about the IC. Okay, let's draw. Let's go with the first chapter. Mickey. This story is the first time I went out on the icy. It was the middle of November. I had just had my 10th birthday and there were whales resting in our bay. Clouds of spun hung above our shining backs and thick mist, white and beautiful, had been blanketing on the horizon for days. In the blue sea, where I live, winters can be so cold that air freezes the sails of ships. I found a bird on the ground once, a cormorant, that dropped from the sky when its wings went rigid and cold. It wasn't dead. I carried it home to Dad, who has such a knack with animals, and we were, we were able to let the bird go after a couple of days. Dad has a way with everything in the natural world. There's something in our ki kitchen wall, a thing most people don't have on their walls, a piece of the mermaid's flipper. Not very big but about the size of a hanky, a little big, 
a little bit furry and slightly pinkish. When Dad was younger, he caught the mermaid in his net and when he was fishing for cod. She was so frightened he was so she was so frightened that she screamed and her flips were whipped back and forth. She obviously thought he was going to release her release her. But he did, of course, because it's one thing to catch cod and it's quite another to catch a mermaid, he said. There are some things we don't do. Once she calmed down, he let he freed her gently from the net and let her go. But a small piece of flipper had been torn off and laid laid at the bottom of the boat. That's the piece he mounted on our board and nailed up on our kitchen wall, making Mickey and I glued pebbles around it. Mickey is my sister, and she's the reason I ventured out into the ice. Because, you see, there are some people who believe there's no difference between catching cod and catching a mermaid. Or doing even worse things. Where I live, there was a time when pirates wrote the sea. Foul, wicked pirates. Tell me about Whitebeard, Mickey used to say, when we were lying on a pull-out sofa and it was time to go to sleep. Dad was in the bedroom, snoring so hard the whole house began to shake. But you don't, you won't go to sleep if I do, I answered. You'll stay awake half of the night, crying, and you'll wake me up. We'll be useless in the morning. I promise, she whispered, whispered close to my ear. The good thing about this book has illustrations. I think that's Siri and that's Mickey asking Siri to tell her a story about someone called Whitebeard. Hmm. I promise to go to sleep. Please tell me. Please, 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 nice Siri. So I had to tell her. Anyways, and as always, when I told Mickey about Whitebeard, I started like this. There's a man who treats children as if they're animals. And inside that man, in a place where other people have a soul, there's a space and empty as cold as an ice cave. He's the coldest man there is, Mickey said. She always wanted to help out with storytelling. In fact, she knew the story as well as I did. Anyways, that's right, the coldest man you can possibly imagine, I said. He's a pirate captain, you see, and his hair is as white as snow. It's so long it reaches his waist, but he wears it up in a bun, the way ladies do. Why? Because he doesn't want his hair to freeze and snap off. Anyway, anyone who joins Whitebeard and serves as one of the pirates become rich, unbelievably rich. Do you know why? This Whitebeard lets his crew keep all the loot for themselves. Yes, mm. he lets the pirate share all the gold and silver, all the iron and furs, all the money, chest and valuables among themselves. He doesn't want anything. The only thing he wants. I felt a shudder in my stomach. As I always did when I reached this part of the story. The only thing he wants is children. Small, thin children. The smaller, the better. Whenever the pirates get hold of small children, they throw them straight into the ship's hold. What does the ship look like? It's white, with three masts. On the bro, right in the front, there's a wooden raven's head with a gaping bill. The ship is called Snow Raven. But nearly everybody calls it Ra the Raven. That's right. And in the Raven, they sail, or sail all the way to Whitebeard's Island. Where's that? Far to the west, as far as you can sail before tumbling over the edge of the world. You know there's a place called Seglin, don't you, Mickey? Yes. Mickey's voice was hoarse. And you know there was a kind of place it is. Yes, it's a village. A big village with pay streets. Pirates go to drink and brawl and... I'm not exactly about the, sure about the brawling. But I do know Seglin is a nice place. And lots of rough people go there. All kinds of crooks. People who want to make money by stealing and by others. And um, by far the worst are the ones who are looking by white beard. So they can work for him. Probably Wipers Island is somewhere near the second. And what happens to the children who are taken to their island? What do they do there? Whitebeard? White 
My head has a mine, I said. A great chasm in the earth. What kind of mind, Mickey says. No one knows, but they say. But they say. And I'm going to leave it there. So I, it's really annoying. I can feel the feeling of yawning as she stopped at a cliffhanger. But in order for you guys to read the book and you want to know what's happening, you must read the Icy Pirate. So I hope you enjoyed the first little chapter of that book. And I'm afraid I have to go now. But make sure to check my other videos on other book reviews you might want to try. Anyways, see you guys in the next video. Bye!